first thing we're going to go over is the fuel rail assembly. There's some specifics in this that uh, I wanted to go over. The shorter rail goes on the driver's side or the left side of the car. The longer rail goes on the passenger side or the right side of the car. Um, there are three different brackets. Uh, you have two brackets that are slotted. You have one bracket that just has a hole that's the same shape as the other brackets and one that's running opposite. They need to go on in these directions. This gives you uh, movement adjustability, this gives you location, and this is um, an opposite direction on that rail. Dash six fittings go in the front of the rail, dash eight fittings go in the back of the rail. To install the, uh, the uh, O-ring fittings correctly, you wanna lube up the O-ring itself. Um, I use Silglide here. Um, any sort of grease will work. Um, basically, you're trying to keep the O-ring from tearing when it's being installed. Um, these thread into the rail, and you want to go until they butt up completely against the, um, against the rail itself. doesn't take much grease, just a little bit to ease the assembly process. To keep from marring the fuel rails and the fittings, I use aluminum wrenches. You don't need to tighten these extremely tight. Hand tightening them like that is probably all that is needed. They're not going to work their way loose. But they do butt up completely to the rail. Next would be installation of the brackets. Um, as you can see, all the brackets are countersunk, and we're using countersunk. Uh, um, head fasteners. On metal to metal um, assembly like this we're going to want to use Loctite to make sure that none of these uh, um, screws come loose. So you just want a little dab of Loctite on each bolt and they'll get assembled to the uh, fuel rail like so. You would repeat this uh, on the other three positions. Basically tighten them up. Again, nothing crazy. Just make sure that they're tight. The Loctite will do its thing eventually and keep the, the bolts from coming out. So um, I'm going to go ahead and finish up these rails and we'll come right back. All right, we've uh, finished assembling the rails here and I just wanted to go over once again. Um, this bracket, this bracket, and this bracket are all the same. They all go in the same direction. This bracket and this bracket have a little slot in them that uh, allows for some adjustability. This bracket does not. So on this rail, you want one slotted, one with just the hole. On this bracket, uh, or on this, on this rail, you want a slot and then the opposite bracket. This bracket is opposite of the rest of them. So it's uh, just to clear things up. That's how all of that goes. The rails, AMS faces towards the outside of the car. Again, the, uh, the, the longer rail goes on the right side of the car uh, as you're sitting in the driver's seat. The shorter rail goes on the left side of the car as you're sitting in the driver's seat. Dash six uh, fittings up front, dash eight fittings in the rear. That finishes up the build of the rails. We're going to go over the uh, fuel pressure regulator assembly really quick. Uh, this is what comes with your fuel pressure regulator kit. We're not going to be using the factory bracket, the plug, or the O-rings. Uh, first grab the regulator. Um, you get a washer, a set screw for adjusting fuel pressure, and a nut to lock fuel pressure in. We'll set that once it's on the car. 
Next thing we're going to do is put the bracket, the AMS supplied bracket on, the, um, using the supplied fasteners. The bracket can only really fit on one way, facing uh, downwards. No need to get really carried away with tightening it up, just a little snug works. Um, we're going to put three fittings in the regulator. Uh, this is a block off port and two dash eight fittings, one for the return and one for the feed. Um, just like with the rails, you're going to want to put a thin layer of grease um, on the O-rings to keep them from tearing. This is going to go on the left side of the fuel pressure regulator. And the two remaining fittings go in the bottom and the right hand side. Snug them up by hand with a non-marring wrench. And this will get locked in place with a, an Allen wrench. The last step, or the last two steps, um, are going to use Teflon paste. Um, Teflon paste provides a, the seal that you need to uh, keep fuel and um, um, air from leaking. So essentially, you want to get a little bit of Teflon paste on the uh, pipe fitting, spread it all the way around. The air fitting goes in the side of the regulator, and the fuel pressure gauge is going to go into the front of the regulator. Same thing again, spread it around, make sure all the threads that are going to be going in the regulator are coated, and this gets spun into place. The regulator is going to be oriented with the adjuster up, so you're going to want to account for that when you position the gauge. Probably uh, stop with the gauge in an upright position so you can read it. And then again, tighten this up. You don't have to get crazy again with tightening these up. This is uh, it's a tapered fitting. It gets tighter the, the more you go in. You don't have to bottom it out. Just go until it uh, takes a little bit of effort to, uh, to um, turn it, and that should be good and tight. That finishes up the regulator portion. We're going to go over uh, line orientation real quick. Um, left side rail, right side rail get connected by the crossover tube at the front of the car. This is the dash, the only dash six line in the kit. There are two lines that have quick connect fittings on them. The larger of the two is going to snap to the feed line uh, of the car and going to come around the back and connect to the right side fuel rail. The left side fuel rail gets connected with the line that has uh, AN fittings on both ends. Put the 45 degree fitting on the left side rail. And the straight fitting is going to go into the fuel pressure regulator. The remaining line is going to come from underneath the fuel pressure regulator on the return side. It's going to pass over the top and the side, actually next to the side of the regulator and it's going to snap into the return line on the car, similar to this. And that's how the lines are arranged.
the last remaining step is once it once you're in the car, once the uh, fuel system is in the car, you'd use these double wrap uh, ties to neatly secure these lines from rubbing on uh, anything and to keep them lined up. Um, we've, we've provided two of them. Essentially, you can go through this way around one line and then back through the other way around the other line and that'll link them both together and keep them nice and secure. After removing the factory fuel rail and lines, you're ready to install the AMS fuel rail kit. The AMS rails are bolted to the lower plenum using factory bolts. Only four of the bolts are used. You'll need to remove the factory fuel line bracket to make room for the fuel pressure regulator. The fuel pressure regulator is bolted into place using supplied hardware. The vacuum line is run from the fuel pressure regulator to the other side of the intake manifold where the factory fuel pressure regulator vacuum line was attached. Be sure to secure both ends of the vacuum line with a zip tie. The fuel feed and return lines simply snap over the factory hard lines at the firewall. Use the supplied zip ties to neatly route the lines before tightening all of the fittings. Using the supplied instructions from Fuel Lab, adjust the fuel pressure regulator to what's appropriate for your setup. Um, I hope this helps with your uh, fuel rail install and uh, give us a call if you need any help.